Howdy! This class, or er, this video is on C++. It's lecture one, and it's an introduction to C++. Let me show you how to get into this. So, first thing is you want to do is you want to open up Microsoft Visual C++. And now, the very first thing you want to do is you want to make a project. So, let's go to New Project, and you're going to click Windows or Win32 Console Application. You're going to come down here where it says name, you're going to left click in there and then we're going to write a name. We're going to call this C++1. And click OK. And after this, just click finish. This is, if you wanted to do more complicated things, but we're not. This is the very first video. So click finish. OK, I'm just going to delete all this stuff because I don't want it here. OK. Now, uh, I've actually gone to the trouble of going ahead and making a bunch of code for us, so I'm just going to copy it and paste it. So now, let me give you a quick uh, overview of the commands that we're going to use. The first one is the double forward slash, this guy right here. So this double forward slash, it just tells C++ that this is a comment for humans. Ignore it. Anything that you see after this double forward slash, ignore it, C++. Do not touch it. That's all it's saying. Now, there's another fancy code that you can type is this forward asterisk. And then to close it out is you do the asterisk forward slash again. And anything inside of here, or anything inside of he in here is commented out. And I'll, I'll get, I'm just explaining this stuff. And then at after I explain go through all these, I'll show you examples. So now, next code I want you guys to know is F7. Uh, the F7 command is up at the top of your keyboard, and it just tells the compiler to compile your code. Let's see, then you have Control plus F5. So you hold down Control and you press F5. Just tells C++ to run your code. Uh, next thing, pound include. Uh, this will be some file name, whatever you want to put in here. Uh, inside of these two brackets. This is the less than, that's the greater sign bracket. Now it just tells the preprocessor to take the contents of file name, which is in here, whatever you have in there, and include them wherever they see it. So include it here. So for this one, for instance, pound include IO stream, uh, you would include it right here at this line. And let's see what line, this is line 16. So uh, let's see, so now we're going to come down to here, backslash n. Backslash N, this just tells the computer or the compiler to move to the next line. Backslash T tells the compiler to move eight spaces forward. End line is just another way to do backslash N. It just move, it tells the compiler or C++ to move down to the next line. We also have pound include std afx.h. Now this is a special header file and it's basically just to save time so C++ doesn't have to compile every file and tons of includes. Uh, you also have pound include io stream, and this is a library of input output commands. I commented these out right now because I don't want to use them just yet. We'll use them later, and I'll show you how they're used. But uh, pound uh, include io manip, that's just for alignment. Uh, forward slash forward slash. Well, that's just a comment and out. But using namespace as uh, standard, so se is just pronounced standard. And it's just a library of all the common slash standard commands, and it's it's also helpful for as a shortcut. Here is where you put your code, and if you wanted to say if you wanted to print out to the screen, blah blah, you would have to put standard uh, colon colon c out. The reason you're doing this is because you're telling uh, you're telling C plus plus hey or the compiler hey, I want you to print out blah blah, and it's going to come down to this line right here and just going to say oh. Well, what is C out? And then this part right here, the standard colon colon, is actually a library, and it and inside of this library is where it tells the compiler what, how to use C out. Because otherwise, it'd come to here and be like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what C out is. It's just letters to me. But this part right here, the standard colon colon, is actually just telling the compiler, hey, it's this is how you use it. So that's what this part is. But this part it gets really annoying if you have to retype this uh, std colon colon for every single command. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna compile this so you can see what it does. So I'm pressing F7. Okay, so it's finished compiling and it said it's successful. So now 
I want to run my program. So I hold down control and I press F5. I see blah blah and press any key to continue so I will press the space bar. Let's say I wanted to write something like, uh, let's say STD, colon, colon, C out, less than, less than, woo hoo, I am so happy. I wrote blah, blah, and semicolon to close it out. Woo hoo, I am so happy, I wrote blah, blah. So now let's, uh, let's, compile this so f7 again and ah succeeded so now let's run this and look blah blah woo i am so happy i wrote blah blah but you know this it's kind of hard to read it like this isn't it so let's see if we can't fix this up a little bit better but i mean could you see how constantly writing this uh std colon colon cl would get annoying so programmers they came up with a better way to do it and they said well i just want to write this standard colon colon once so they came up with with this using standard library and then it's colon oops colon colon cl and now after this part you don't have to do the you don't have to do uh, standard colon colon now you could just you know just do it once then you could just write c out less than less than my fingers are so happy they don't have to write standard colon colon anymore so now let's run this uh let's do f7 and you notice on this one i no longer wrote standard colon colon for i just wrote c out so it's completed let's well, look blah blah or blah blah woo who I am so happy I wrote blah ha my fingers are so happy they don't have to write standard anymore press any key to continue but you know that's kind of hard to read isn't it so why don't we make it a little more legible do you remember how I told you backslash end well let's use backslash end we're gonna put inside of the quotations backslash n right there I'm also going to put it here. Well, let's just put it there for now. You notice it's right after blah, blah. So let's compile this, run the code, uh, control F5. And then look, it says blah, blah. And it goes down one line and then you have all this other stuff. So let's fix that. So now I'm going to put, you'll notice, so you notice here it says blah, blah. And here it says blah, blah, black backslash N. And right here is where it goes and it drops it down. So now I'm gonna put another one right here after blah blah, which will be right here. And it's gonna separate those. So now let's let's check that out. Uh, backslash n. I'm gonna put two there to separate it. And you'll see what happens if I put two here. So now let's go ahead and compile this. And now let's uh, run the code. And the first one has one backslash n and it drops it down to here. Then we start with the next code, woohoo, at the next line. And as you notice, it says, I wrote blah, blah. I am so happy. I wrote blah, blah. Uh, Woohoo, I'm so happy. I wrote blah, blah. Backslash n, backslash n. So it drops it down one line and a second line. And then again, it starts with, oh, my fingers are so happy. They don't have to write um, standard colon colon anymore. But then again, you have this press any key to continue. And it doesn't look very good. So let's go and fix that. So here, I'm going to put another backslash n backslash n backslash n three times and it'll drop it down three times so compile okay now we're ready let's run this code the first one says c out blah blah drop it down one line blah blah drop down one line woohoo i'm so happy i wrote blah blah black slash n backslash n woohoo i'm so happy i wrote blah blah and it drops it down once drops it down twice ah uh, my fingers are so happy they don't have to write standard anymore backslash n backslash n backslash n so it drops it down once uh, twice, and then three times. And that's how you do that. Now the only other thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you how to use a different command instead of backslash n. Here is another way to go to the next line. These two again, and we're going to do endl. Semicolon. Look at that, it's underlined. Do you know why this is underlined? Because I didn't declare it. See here, I declare it here. So for this one, actually, my fingers are so sad because I have to do std uh, colon colon and that should do it. Okay, so now let's uh, compile this and it completed. So now let's uh, 
Now let us do run this and look at here. So blah blah, woohoo, I'm so happy I wrote blah blah. Oh, my fingers are so happy they don't have to write um, standard anymore. Here is another way to go to the next line. Ah, and look, I put it down here. And that's how you type in this one. You just put it in right after uh, after you write it. I want to show you the, uh, the backslash T. Let's do C out again. I am lazy. I don't want to use the space bar so much. Now, uh, we're going to have to do this again. Uh, backslash T. Let's use it right in there. Let's see what happens. So now let's see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. Here's another way to go to the next line, which was ENDL. And now I added backslash T, backslash T, backslash T. And that is 8, 16, 24. So, but you see it says, I am lazy. And then there's 24 spaces here. And it says, I don't want to use the space bar so much. And press any key to continue. So let's add a backslash in here. And that's how you use the backslash T. It just, you know, wherever you put it, it's going to give you spaces. Compile one last time. Let's run the code. And there you go. See, from there, it just dropped it down to over here. So now, as you noticed, uh, constantly putting in standard colon colon is really annoying because you'd have to put it in every time. So uh, the programmers came up with a real nice shortcut where you don't have to do this anymore. They came up with this. Using namespace standard. And this makes it so you don't have to constantly declare uh, this standard colon colon. It just makes it so you do it once here, and then from then on, you're telling the compiler, hey, from now on, I want you to add this prefix to any of these standard commands. Like, cout is a standard command of IO stream. Um, so you don't, and so is enl, or endl. That way you don't have to declare it. So... Let's go ahead and fix this so we don't have to do that anymore. Get rid of these two. Come down here. We can get rid of this now. Don't need it. Don't need that either. Ah, it's so nice. Because you don't have to do it at all. Oh, I don't need this either. Oh, can't even get rid of this. And let's run this and see if it works without putting in the standard colon colon. So let's compile it, and it succeeded. Now let's run it. Ah, oh, and look, it works just fine. So the main point is that you use using namespace standard so you don't have to constantly put in standard colon colon or using standard colon colon because you do it all at once right here and it saves you space so you don't have to do it. So uh, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. And the next one I'm going to show you how to center all of these so you can make these things look a little bit nicer. And I'll, I'll show you a couple tricks for that. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and good luck in your classes.